that you might think that you had a great Easter service at your church this last uh, Easter, uh, which is over a week ago now. I, I recognize that. Um, we respond to stories, but we pre-record our episodes. You might think you had a great uh, Easter, but let me just tell you, Transformation Church with Mike Todd in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, had the best, by far, Easter service that has ever existed on the planet, and uh, probably even including the original Easter service when the apostles met together and Jesus actually appeared in front of them. Of course, I'm kidding. Of course, that's not the case. Uh, it's Mike Todd and it's Transformation Church, and we're going to look at what they actually did. You can actually find all this information on Protestia um, on Twitter. They, they've posted all this. You, um, uh, Protestia on Twitter, and uh, you can find them on, online and everything. But um, we're going to play some videos and we're going to talk about it. It's not as bad as some people are saying, but it's bad. So we're going we're gonna to... <laughs> all right, let me show you an intro video just, just, to get, just to wet your whistle. Here, just a little bit. Here's 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 a little a bit about what we're going to be responding to today, um, and then we'll then we'll dive in. Okay. So that's what we're talking about here. <laughs> uh, instead of having a, a traditional Easter service, which you wouldn't expect from Transformation Church in Tulsa, Oklahoma with Pastor Mike Todd, if I can call him Pastor, um, they had an Easter play, which I think could potentially be, you know, okay, right? I, I'm fine with Easter plays. I'm not against that. Um, but we're going to break it down and actually talk about what's in it, uh, what's good, what's bad. Um Look, it's not all bad. It's not bad to have an Easter play, but there's there is a lot of uh, there's a lot of hubbub this last week over it. So um, on Saturdays we do our recording for our episodes uh, for the next week. So this is the first time I could actually respond to it. Uh, it's been kind of the buzz for the first few days after Easter, and now here we go. Here's the here's the definitive voice. I know you guys have been waiting an an extra week to hear the correct answer on this. Uh, from point of view, <laughs> here we go. By the way, this uh, I'm Pastor Josh Barnes. This is a show where we're unashamed to look at political, social, cultural, and theological issues from a biblical worldview. We, we, we do that because Jesus died on the cross, and he did rise from the dead. We could actually prove that historically. We, we, we went through that last week, actually. As we do every, every year, we go through the historical evidence for the resurrection of Christ. But since Jesus really rose from the dead... We have a mandate to have a biblical worldview about everything because we're wrong if we disagree with the Bible because the Bible, the entirety of the Bible can be proven many different ways. But if, if not by Jesus rising from the dead, then, you know, come on. Well, that's the greatest single piece of evidence that the Bible is true. So 
Um, we can't be right about issues if we disagree with the Bible. Um, so we're going to just say, is is it biblical? Is the Transformation Church uh, Easter service, was that a biblical way to honor Christ and to bring uh, unbelievers to salvation. And, and that's really the goal here. We're going we're gonna to talk first about, and by the way, if you're watching, thank you for joining us, however you're watching. There's many ways to watch Point of View, whether you're watching on uh, Red America Media, FISM TV, um, YouTube, uh, K-Star Conservative Radio Network, everywhere but YouTube, this is going to be two episodes. I'm just telling, like, we don't always decide that ahead of time. <laughs> whether it's going to be a two episode thing, but I'm just saying there's so much to talk about here. Uh, I'm pretty positive. This is going to be a two episode or, um, so it, you know, we're going to stop at, at one point, but if you're watching on YouTube, it'll just continue on. We'll try to get the whole thing. All right. Uh, but we're going to break it down and, and probably in the first episode that we do, it's going to, j we're just going to be dealing with the play and, and, and the aspects there of the, of the Easter play. Um, and, <laughs> musical cantata it's not really a good it's not traditional at all and and that's that's okay right not everything has to be traditional um so we're not going to try to get on you know the tradition bandwagon we're just going to try to be you know thinking here um and then we'll actually talk about the the uh, sermon or uh, i guess a sermon a gospel presentation that uh, pastor mike todd did after the play my understanding is there's only clips of this you can't really find the whole thing or at least i haven't been able to so uh these are just some clips that you can find on protestia uh, on twitter uh, they've they've posted these clips so that's where i got it from um and uh okay so let's 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 jump in and we're gonna uh, get your bibles out if, if you guys want to follow up follow along here because i'm gonna try to as we go just sort of listen through this play what what we know about the play and see how biblical it is. It's not all bad. It's not all bad. Um, let me play this first clip, and, uh, and just to get us started, this this appears to be the ver the beginning of the play where they're sort of setting setting the tone and and the theme. He couldn't bear the thought of never seeing her again, so he decided to send his only son, the Great Knight of Avenia, to save her. Okay, so we're gonna stop right there. So basically, the play is is like this uh, fantasy world, and you've got um, a dragon um, that's gonna be played. I think by that that woman in in the last clip that I showed, um, who, who's sort of like singing, uh, the dragon is a hustler or whatever. You know, uh, that she's the dragon. Okay, um, she's Satan. I guess that's a picture of Satan, and the dragon has captured a uh, a princess. And the, the princess, of course, is a, is a picture of God's people. Um, I, I, I'm just going to guess. And, and of course, God is going to send Jesus down to defeat, to, to, to slay the dragon and rescue the princess. And the princess is going to be, you know, his bride. Okay. Let's, let's break this down in concept. Okay. All right. I can get on board with that. I can get on board with a with a play about a fictional thing that's meant to picture Christ and, and explain the reality of, of what Christ did. To sort of give you a, an analogy of, of Christ's love for his people and how he came to the world um, to, to ransom them, you know, to, to free them. That, um, that, that's okay. I, I, I'll accept that. I'll accept that as a, as a as a one way to reach the lost, you know, to use pictures. I don't think you should do it on Sunday in a church service. All right. I, I think Sunday in a church service is a is a time where we declare the word of God and teach people the Bible. Um the Bible has to be the emphasis of Sunday, right? Not just Bible concepts that are portrayed in allegories. That's fine to use allegories to help people. But if Sunday isn't about understanding 
and and applying and preaching the word, what are we doing? Uh, let, let me give you. Uh, let me pull this on off the screen so I can pull up something else on the screen. Just a second. Um, I'm gonna get. Uh, let me pull up a, a scripture reference for us here. Uh, this is First Timothy, and this is gonna be a lot of like. First, we're dealing with like the conceptual. I'm sorry, not First Timothy. This should be Second Timothy. Second Timothy three. Um, so people think, well, you know, because the world is so dark and because the world, people in the world are so lost, the, the solution is that we need to get people to, um, we, we need to make the gospel more understandable and more palatable. And so maybe church, if we're going to reach the lost with our church service, it should be less about the Bible and more about like explaining Bible concepts uh, making them easier and more palatable. Um, and, and I'm all for explaining Bible contact, concepts and making them easier to understand. I'm all for that. I'm actually, I, I feel like I do some of that. Let's, some of what we do here, our point of view on the Bible explained on YouTube and other, other things that I do. So I'm not against that. But, but notice what, what uh, Paul has to say to Timothy here. This is, this is an interesting comparison. Um, this is uh, after Paul describes to Timothy how dark the world is. And, you know, evil men and seducers will wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. This is 2 Timothy 3.13. And verse 14, he says, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned has been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Jesus Christ. So Paul has spent the rest of the chapter sort of talking about how desperately depraved the rest of the world is. And he's now giving the solution. He's like, here's the thing. You're not like that. You're not desperately depraved because of the Holy Scriptures that have made you wise into salvation of the Holy Spirit of God. Um, I mean, yeah, that is your nature as a human being, but the Scriptures are the answer, right? Verse 16, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Like if these, if people need, want, if you want any of those things, for do, if you want to teach people doctrine, if you want to reprove them for, for evil, if you want to correct them and help them do right, if you want to show them how to live their lives rightly, all of that, you need the scriptures for that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished or thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Like every good work that can be done comes by way of the scriptures. Um, that that's what the script. So then he he concludes in the next chapter. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at His appearing and at, and His kingdom, preach the word. Like because the world's so dark. And because the Bible has the answer, your job is to just give people the Bible. Like, that's your job. So the, the best way that we can reach the lost is with the Bible. That doesn't mean we don't explain Bible concepts and plays. I just think a play like this is good on a Saturday before Easter. You know? So, but if your church decides to do a play like that, not just a play that, that like gives the Bible and portrays the Bible. We're talking about a play that is not even biblical at all it's it's just an a allegory of the bible i mean that that needs to be on a saturday on a friday don't do that on your sunday morning service your sunday morning service is when the people of god get together to declare the bible if, if no other service it's got to be at least be the sunday morning so just as a pastor i'm gonna i'm gonna object to this in principle just just in principle um, but so far, we don't have like heresy or something going on. It's not heresy for them to do a play. And some people have said that this is heresy that they have a woman portraying uh, God here. She's singing on behalf of God to send the son to go rescue the princess. But here's the thing. Women can sing songs um, that um, whereby they, they uh, sing the words of God even so the question is 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 this play attempting to portray god as a as a female or is it saying this female is just singing and she's singing about what god did right is that what's happening right is there a transgender thing going on here or is it just the woman is singing the part and it's talking about god and what god did okay so 
the or the father because here's the thing throughout the song it's going to call him a father and use masculine pronouns for god so again i, I want to be i want to be reasonable i don't think this i don't feel comfortable with this i don't think you should feel comfortable with it but i also don't want to jump on the it's all heresy bandwagon so let's 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 just watch it let's just be you know let's just watch it and see see what happens here here's here's uh, this lady singing on behalf of the father who's sending the son to rescue the princess, the son, picture of Jesus, princess, picture of us uh, from the dragon, a picture of Satan. Here we go. You'll be there waiting for you. You'll be there waiting for you. Okay. With tears stained eyes. Now she'll be there dressed for the fight. Sword out in mouthful of lies, but you'll be fine. And I already know that it's uncomfortable for a father to ask this of his son. You notice that, like, for a father to ask this of his son. So they're not making God into a, a female here. Um, it's, it's just that the female is singing the lines, singing the lines that are spoken by the father of his, to his, his masculine son. So yeah, do I, do I feel comfortable with that? No. Do I think that this would be much better with a man? Yes. Um, but you know, I mean, all right. So it's just a woman singing about what the father is saying, not so much, the woman portraying the father. Although you do have the, you know, sort of like the son, like this, you know, she looks a little like Ishtar or what is that, that goddess thing, you know? So you have a little goddess thing going on with her outfit. So that's weird. Um, but, you know, look, in, in plays, you have things like in Peter Pan, before transgenderism was a thing, you know, uh, because it's not always been a thing. It's a very modern thing. Um, before trans... I mean, people would do weird things, but transgenderism wasn't a thing. Anyway, I'm off. I'm off topic. Peter Pan. You had women playing Peter Pan, and that's just accepted in in plays, right? That that women sometimes just portray men, and and it's not a, a statement about those women thinking that they are men or anything like that. It's just how plays work, especially with singing. A lot of times, your woman can hit hit certain notes and all that kind of stuff, and so on and so forth. So. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt here because they're still using masculine pronouns for God. I'm not going to say this is heresy or anything like that. Let's just let it go. I, again, this is bad. It certainly makes me feel uncomfortable. I certainly wouldn't be going back to the church because I would feel super uncomfortable going to a, a, a church like this. However, I have to also check that with, you know, reality it, it and just say, is it as bad as everyone is saying? Not as bad as everyone's saying, no. Um, not yet. Let's continue. Could you kill the dragon and save the girl? You've got to shut down in the world. And you can have a boy your bride. But this will cost your... Okay, kill the dragon, save the girl. He's got a trap down in the world. You can have her for your bride, but it'll cost you your life. Notice what's being set up here. This is where we have, like, hints at doctrinal error. Like, actual... Doctrine, meaning like teachings of the Bible that are that are in error here, because while it is the devil that causes men to sin, right? I mean, he convinces Adam and Eve, convinces Eve and Adam follows to sin, and that's what brings on us condemnation. Our condemnation is not from the devil. Sure, he, he orchestrated it, but it, the condemnation is from God because we didn't sin against the devil. We didn't sin and have to pay a debt to the devil. We sin and we owe God be, um, our, our, our lives and everything because, because we, have, we were created by him for a purpose. We denied that purpose, and now the creator who created us says, you are sinning against me. You have no right to to deny me, I created you, you are under condemnation. So our condemnation isn't really the devil. The devil, of course, wants us to stay in sin, and, and Christ wants to give us salvation, but the salvation comes from Christ 
himself taking on us the judgment of God so that we can then have freedom. So there's a, a little bit of what's called ransom theory um, that's worked into this into this um, into this play. The ransom theory is that Jesus came and he died to pay a ransom to uh, to the devil. Like he had to pay our pay a debt to the devil because the devil owned us. And the devil then had to let us go because Jesus paid our ransom to the devil. That's not accurate. And I can I can show you this from uh, from scripture here. Let me pull up the scripture again um, where I can show you. Um, the, the simplest way is Isaiah 53. There's a lot of other passages of really in-depth to- topic. Maybe one day we'll get into it in depth. But this is a prophecy about the Messiah. And it says here, <clears throat> uh, verse 3, He was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement, meaning the punishment that we deserved, the the punishment that would bring peace was on him. Our peace, we get peace, he gets punishment. The chastisement of our peace was on him. And by his stripes, with his stripes, we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray and turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Notice that it was our iniquity for which we were under condemnation before God. And God said, ah, I'm going to take your iniquity and lay it on Christ. It wasn't just Jesus paid a ransom to the devil. No, we were condemned by God, and Jesus came and and took that condemnation. Um, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before his shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. Who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. <clears throat> Uh, let's see, where, where were we? Cut off all the land of living. He was oppressed. Uh, tsh, um, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. Because of our transgression, he was stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. It didn't please the devil. It didn't satisfy our debt to the devil. It satisfied our condemnation before God, the just requirements of God. God is just, and sinners must receive justice. Jesus came and satisfied the just requirements on our behalf, and he pleased the Lord, and uh, the Lord put him to grief. And thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed, it shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hands. So the, the, the soul of Christ was made an offering for sin, which is exactly what happened when an offering was brought to the temple in the Old Testament, they would kill the lamb, and the lamb would receive the death that was deserved by the sinner. Like, like he got that judgment that was supposed to be. So again, it's like uh, what, what you're going to see throughout this play is that they're portraying it as if the, uh, Jesus came to defeat the devil because the devil held people bondage. Well, no, it's actually sin that holds us in bondage. And our condemnation is actually before God because of our sin against him. And the devil just wants to encourage that. He wants people to be in sin because then he knows they're in bondage. And he doesn't want people to find salvation in Christ because he wants them to stay in bondage. So the devil's in there, but he's not the one who's bound us. And he's not the one who has to be paid off, right? He just wants to encourage the sin that that binds us. So if the, if the dragon is sin, then we have a different we have a different picture than what they're portraying. But then we have a, a little bit more accurate of a picture. All right, let's uh, let's continue on. So there's there's a there's an actual problem philosophically, uh, doctrinally, with this um, that you're going to see kind of unfold more and more. Here we go. Son, there's a debt that she made.
Okay, so uh, just for sake of time, we're going to leave it, leave that clip right, right there. You can you see the whole thing on Protestia, but that's the uh, that's the basics. You see, uh, there's a debt that she has to pay, and uh, she's a slave because of her debt to the dragon, um, and he's he's enslaved her because she owes the dragon something. We owe the devil nothing. We we don't owe the devil anything. He has put us in debt, right? We do have a sin debt. But we don't owe it to the devil. The devil's just the one who convinced the first man to sin and continues to convince uh, human beings to, to sin and, and do wickedly today. The devil is, is not the one we owe, though. We owe God because he created us for a purpose, and we've denied that purpose by disobeying our creator God. We have committed high treason against the God of all of the universe, and we owe God. Um, a, a, a debt in the sense of we are under condemnation and deserve eternal suffering because our suffering is not worthy of even paying off our debt because we are unworthy humans. So our suffering for us is, is not a very valuable thing. Um, on the other hand, su the suffering of Jesus is infinitely valuable and can then pay the debt for all of us, which is why Jesus came and paid the debt. Let me see if I can get just a little bit of this other clip in before we uh, round up the first half of this and move on to the second half. Uh, if you're watching again, uh, other on any other avenue than YouTube, then you'll see it in two pieces instead of all all as one. Um, here's here's a little bit further on in in the play. An eerie fear gripped the heart of the princess as she approached the ominous gates of the city of Heldra. Nevertheless. She dared not turn back. Hello? Is anyone there? Can anyone help me? This is all my fault. Well, well, well. It looks like it is your fault. And now all the people of your kingdom are suffering because of you! It appeared that the dragon was right. Back at Havania, riots had ensued outside the castle walls. People were indulging in all kinds of terrible behavior, and it seemed that they all had turned greedy and self- Okay, so we'll... we'll <laughs> Uh, you understand that this is right before the Keisha song is coming, the, the Keisha cover that they're going to do. Um, so uh, that's that's holy and beautiful. Uh, we'll, we'll leave it right there for, for this half. We'll pick it up on the next half. We'll see you next time right here on Point of View. All right, and we'll, we're back. I'm Pastor Josh Barnes. This is a show where we're unashamed to look at political, social, cultural, and theological issues from a biblical worldview. We do that because Jesus really did die on the cross and rise from the dead. And we've been talking actually about uh, one church's uh, manner in which they celebrated the resurrection of Christ. Uh, this is the Transformation Church in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Pastor Mike Todd, and uh, their play that they put on for Easter. And uh, and and they, they've got... Keisha songs talks about butts, <laughs> about the size of a butt, and and unfortunately I don't even know the context of the of the booty size comment here, but um, there's some problems. We've been talking about it. It's it's sort of been the buzz last week, and some of the criticism of this is unfair. Um, I think we found that so far in what we've looked at. Some of the criticism is just it's just not a really fair criticism, but some of it is, and uh, I think this most problematic thing out of the clips we've seen so far. Have it really? It's not so much that that there is a play on Easter. Uh, I prefer that a play that's just an allegory. This that's not even you know not even scripture, or it's just an allegory of scripture. Be done like before Sunday, not like on a Sunday. You know, um, we we should emphasize the scripture, the 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 preaching of the Bible. And I went to First Timothy three to 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 make that point um, in the last half. Okay, so. Those those are pro are problems. Uh, they're not. I'm not going to have a big problem about a woman singing a part about the uh, a father, a man who's a father sending his son. It, just because the woman sings the part, I'm not. I'm not going to try to go overboard. It makes me uncomfortable. It's just uh, we want to be factual here with with um, with our problems. If it's a problematic thing, it's a problematic thing. Um, I think that's. Um, I don't. I don't. I'm uncomfortable with it. I just don't think 
you know, from a perspective of just a play, it's, um, it's a big problem. Um, but we're seeing now here's, here's the things that people really get, uh, that really bother people. It's the, it's these, this Keisha song cover that they're, that they're doing, you know, and, and this comment about the booty size. And let me, let me just play that video again, where you see the, see the comment about us. I don't even know, um, what the context of this is. So I can't, um, I can't tell you why this comment came out. We're going to kind of guess at it, I guess, um, and see if we can <laughs> understand why in the world will that be in an Easter um, play? As we were saying, Dragon, this is what you need to do. Step one, find you a baddie. Okay. Yeah. But step two, she got to have a fatty. Hey. <laughs> hey. Some yeah. Look back, Daddy. Uh oh. What is she doing? Friends, I don't have a fatty. Girl, Girl we keep telling you it's okay. Your little booty matter too, friends. Y'all know they don't be discriminating. They don't be discriminating. Okay, so apparently these are demons. Um, <laughs> giving advice to the dragon uh, about finding uh, a mate. Um... I, I don't know. I don't know because I think the dragon's played by a girl and uh, uh, but it's like he don't be I, I don't I don't know. I, I really have no idea what what this is all about, but it, let's just say that whoever's like putting this together and, and writing the script for this and, and you know, oh, we want to put in some comedy, uh, just sort of lighten the thing up and make fun of demons. Um, okay. I'm all for making fun of demons. I'm, you know, we shouldn't take them lightly. They're actually actual enemies and real things. Um, but, you know, making, I'm all for, you know, laughing at evil, right? In, in a, you know, God has control and he's going to win sort of a, a way. But, I mean, someone's got to look at the script and say, guys, we're going to put do this in church. Can we just not do, can we cut that little comment about the size of somebody's booty? out of uh out of the church service you know maybe, maybe just let me just cut that if we're gonna do some editing let's edit that um you would think right <laughs> um then, okay so it, here's the argument about the other the, about the songs or the, you, we're gonna see here um actually yeah here, here's a couple songs the, the the keisha songs here we go let's make the most of the night like we're going Okay, so I, I don't listen to Keisha. Those do sound like songs I've heard before on the, you know, in the grocery store playing through the speakers or whatever. And I'm told, according to Protestia website, that these are Keisha covers. Uh, so uh, I, listen, the, the argument for using songs like this in church is that Yes, it might have been sung originally by by a person who's not a Christian, who's an unbeliever, and maybe even has an unbeliever's message in the song. But we are redeeming the song. We're redeeming it by turning it into a song about Christ and uh, and and righteousness and holiness, and and taking good things in the world that are used for evil and turning them around and using them for good. Uh, like this is good music that that is used for evil. We're going to turn around and use it for good. All right, okay, if that's the argument you want to make, I'm, I'm not going to make that a big deal, okay? But it, again, <laughs> it's just not the type of church that I'm going to feel comfortable in, and I, I think it's I think it's perfectly reasonable for people who are who are who are un, who, who used to be sinful unbelievers like me, who were exposed to the the messaging of unbelievers like Keisha, and then changed, turned our hearts around and gave them to Christ to now go to church and hear the same kind of music and the same kind of messaging, only like flipped it around. 
that that can make us feel uncomfortable and, and, and make it difficult for us to worship. And um, so I'm going to feel uncomfortable in a church like that. And I, I don't blame anyone else who, who also does. Um, let me see where we where we left off. Let's go back to the we we're trying to go through the clips as as much in order as I could as, as I could. But basically, this is um, well, we kind of left off at that the devil is a hustler thing. Um, let me just let me just play the uh, that song so that way we can um, you can see the the words to it and we can kind of look at that and see how how accurate uh, if there's any doctrinal error there um, before we move on to one of the other clips that is available and then we're going to talk about uh, Mike Todd Pastor Mike Todd pastor of the church uh, got up after this and what he said and see if there's any problematic things uh, in that. <laughs> Okay, all right, so the dragon was an angel turned into a hustler. Uh, okay, that's obviously the devil, right? The devil um, was Michael, the archangel. Uh, it's not Michael. He was Lucifer. <laughs> Michael, I don't know where I got Michael, the archangel. He was Lucifer. Obviously, he fell, turned into a hustler. I don't know what word hustler means. I really don't. I, I'm guessing it means like a criminal. Uh, so <laughs> that, that's that's me. Uh, homes, th there's white millennial homeschool yeah, Bible nerd. I have no idea what the word hustler means. I, I assume that it means criminal. Okay, I got her in the dungeon, can't, you know. Yeah. All right, that, that's that's false. I mean, obviously, Heldra is a picture of hell. Satan isn't in hell. He doesn't have us in hell. Of course, we're headed for hell. But hell was actually created for the first rebellers, and that was Satan. So when, when Satan rebelled against God, God created hell. It was created for the devil and his angels. And... He said, all right, this is your destination because you guys have rebelled against me. Everyone who rebels against me goes to hell. Now, Jesus, of course, God, of course, knew that, that the devil was going to go after men and bring men into the rebellion against God. And that was part of the plan because he was going to then demonstrate his love by dying for our sins. Like all of this is you know, God's perfect plan. But the, devil, the, the hell was created for the devil and his angels and the devil, when he fell, got men to sin so that they would be headed there as well, okay? But that's not where they are now. That's not where, or at least not where the Satan is now. He's not in hell. He's not the master of hell. Uh, so this Heldra place is apparently hell. Uh, but anyway, so there, there's their uh, their analogy is off a little bit there. Let's, let's move on to the next video if we can. Um, ba -da -ba -doo. Let's, try to, let's try this one out. This is, I think... The moment, the resurrection moment. So, um, uh, apparently, like in, in this clip right before this, they they take. Uh, let me see if I can back it up just so you can see it there on the screen. They take and, and put the uh, uh, put the princess who represents God's people, I think, on the on a cross. <laughs> like that's where she belongs. And then by the time you get the resurrection, there's a guy on the cross. So apparently, that's Jesus took the place. Of the princess, like of, of the, and that's good. Like he took our place, um, but it's not, it's not, it's not the devil who put us on the cross. The devil wants us on the cross. The devil wants us in hell, right? But it was, it was God who demanded a righteous sentence for those who rebelled against Him. It was God who we sinned against. It was God who's going to send us to hell if Jesus didn't step in and take our place on the cross. So it's, we got a little backwards there, but um, let's, let's go ahead and play the resurrection part here and see, uh, see what we see. Yeah. That's one. We got on top of the roof. We ain't had to call no truce. Big C, we don't follow the rules. Took over nation, the power loose. If it's us, then you know you will lose. The dragon, the future, the truth. If you want it with us, we got room. 
It get lit, I just picked up a tool. We on high, so I need to be rude again. It get active, you know I get loose. We the winner, ain't nothing to prove. Saw the night and he look like some food. He ain't never coming back from that. Three to his head, no chance to rap. Follow the dragon, now we on the map. If I'm on the track, then I'm running the lap. Yeah. The dragon said it, so I get it done. I'm still like a one of one. I'm a shine, so you my son. I whooped his head, he need a brace. Seen his face and got filled with hate. The night of armor, I vow to break. Told the dragon his soul to take. That, now that's really dark, right? I mean, that's just super demonic, but it's supposed to portray demons, all right? So I'm trying to give them the benefit of the doubt here. I, again, like 100%, I would not, you would not catch me at this church, okay? I'd be feel super uncomfortable, but um, where where is the heresy and where is not? So far, this, this, I guess, isn't heresy. It's just trying to, you know, show su real demonic activity. <laughs> I've been laying in the cut for like three days. They thought it was sweet and started celebrating. They ain't even people I was orchestrating. Raise a toast to the king, it's a special occasion. Holding my side, helping my hand down to my feet. Goes in my head, this bloodshed is not cheap. Death in the grave, I'm all love, believe in me. Fresh out the tomb and held your mouth and hand in now that's, that's interesting. You're gonna take the keys of Heldra, right? Like the, the take the keys of of death and hell. Like, I don't believe that Satan had those keys, <laughs> but Jesus proved that he had authority over death when he rose from the dead. So he did. So the so we actually even have the statement in Revelation that he has the keys of hell and death because he's like, I proved I have authority, right? That's what it. That's what it means. So that's. I mean, look, I, I'm not totally against this. I mean, there's. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of, of of rap or any of this kind of music or anything, but you know it it's portraying this this massive victory that Jesus won. The problem is he didn't he won the victory over demons, sure, right? Like like they they're the ones who were who were rallying people to try to get Jesus, you know, convince the Jews to get Jesus to put to death, and I mean they did a great job, um, you know. So there were definitely were demons involved, but. When Jesus was dead, he wasn't in hell. Um, it says that he, he that was not leave my soul in hell, but that's talking about Hades. That's talking about the area where dead souls go. Some of them are in torment, in in you know in fire. We see this in Luke 16, and others are not. They're in in comfort and in paradise. We see that Abraham, you know, had 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 a man named Lazarus that just came and, and laid in his bosom, in this paradise place after he died, and that's Luke 16. If you want to look it up. Jesus said to the man on the cross uh, when he died, he's like, today you'll be with me in paradise. Not today you'll be with me uh, locked up in, in hell for three days. You know, no, today we're going to be in paradise together. So Jesus is saying, yeah, I went to Hades. I went to this after I went to the afterlife, but I didn't go to the torment spot. I went to the paradise spot. And the Bible says that he preached to the spirits in prison there. It's like maybe from there he preached to the other side, to the, de to the not the demons, but the souls of the lost people saying, listen, I'm the Messiah that you rejected. Um, or, or he's preaching to Lazarus and to Abraham and others who are there and, you know, whatever. The point is that Jesus was not uh, in like hell, like the torment part of hell. Um, that That's not where he was. However, that, that set aside like the, the, the glorious like, triumph and victory of his resurrection that's being portrayed in this shot where he's, he's you know triumphing over, over every other force is definitely like part of the resurrection right it, it's like that that's what the resurrection is all about it shows that jesus is in fact lord and right after the resurrection what does matthew tell us well all power is given unto me in heaven and on earth now go into all the world and preach the gospel right go preach me to the whole world because i just proved that i have authority over everything i, I just proved that i have all the power at all in all of heaven and all in all of earth now go right so there's no doubt that he he makes a show of um oh that's a good first let me um 
Uh, let's see if I can find it. Oh my goodness. Uh, okay, uh, Colossians 2.15. There we go. Let me pull it up on the screen here. Um, so this is this is technically accurate. I mean, I'm, I'm tr again, like I, I feel super uncomfortable in this type of type of a service, but I mean, look at look at this. Uh, Two fifteen, uh, fourteen. He, Jesus, he blotted out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in, in it. So Jesus didn't go to go to the torture part of hell, and he also didn't pay a ransom to the devil. However, he did definitely spoil principalities and powers, and he made a show of them openly when he rose from the dead. That was like him, like taunting them. So this, this, you know, Jesus dancing around like, oh, look at me, I'm, I'm, you know, that's, that's the attitude I, I suppose that the scriptures tell us about the resurrection. Like he, he was taunting um, all other power in in the universe. I uh, saying I, I'm it. I'm the only one. So uh, let's go ahead and go to Pastor Mike Todd's um, gospel presentation afterwards. Here's, here's a little clip. If, uh, I think I'm, think I've got these in order, but I think this, is the, this would be a clip of him before he starts his gospel presentation, just talking about what they just saw in the, uh, in the play. In 2015, um, I became the pastor, and I didn't know what a pastor did. And so I was meeting with a group of people and they was like, what should we do for Easter? I was like, I've never preached the Easter message. So I'm not going to start this year. We need to. Okay. So that, that may not be the best idea. Um, <laughs> like, like, because I've never done it before, I'm not going to do it. It's also probably not a great idea for them to have chosen you as pastor. If you've never, like, if you didn't know what you're doing. <laughs> I mean, right. That's, that's how we treat any other job. You're right. We're like, okay, if you don't know what you're doing, then maybe this is not the best. Maybe you should learn what you're doing first and then come back and we'll make you the pastor. <laughs> okay. And that's probably part of why, uh, there's probably a lot of the reason why we have such bad theology um, mixed in with this play. He means well, it seems, but he doesn't know theology. He admits that he doesn't know what he's doing or didn't when he started being pastor. And and uh, that that's problematic. Come up with an Easter play. And they was like, all right, let's do it. I said, but it can't be no whack, raggedy. Just, he got up. Like, it just cannot be that. Okay, y'all gonna act like I'm not. So he's saying, listen, I, I really wanted to have something that was really good to reach the lost. Only one that saw like, oh, yay. That was good. Like, I was like, it's got to move people. And I really wanted to be focused on people who don't know God are far from him. There's a reason. Okay. Now this is actually, I'm going to agree with this in the, 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 a principle, a principle behind this, that, that on resurrection, right? The, the thing that's glorious to Christians is the death of Christ. That's what purchased our salvation. But the thing that we need to announce to lost people is the resurrection of Christ. The resurrection is the proof that the death was sufficient, is the proof that he has the power to forgive sins, is the proof of everything. So lost people need to hear about the resurrection. So when we're talking about Easter, like Good Friday is for Christians, um, Resurrection Day, Easter, is for unbelievers. Like that's what it's all about. So I think that if, if there's any ever a Sunday you make a huge evangelistic effort to try to reach lost people in your midst, it's got to be on Easter, right? Because that's that's the day when we declare. That's the thing that we declare that proves everything else. So I'm going to, I kind of, I'm really going to agree with that. So now let's go ahead and analyze his gospel message uh, that he presents. Um, let me see if I can click just a couple buttons without changing the screen here and put the gospel message up there. Uh, here we go. All of the works that you do are trying to make you better than somebody else. You don't even have his heart. Okay. All right. Yeah. You, you're, we're not saved by works. Uh, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, uh, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So yeah, absolutely agree with that. You're trying to still work your way into the grace of God. Today, God is saying, I want all my children to come home and get this ring and this robe and sit at my table and know that with all your mistakes, 
with all of your mess ups, with all of the things that you are planning to still do, even sitting here right now, God says, bring it to me. Your confusion, bring it to me. Hey, I'm for that message. That that sounds that sounds good. Um, all right, keep on preaching there, brother. Your addiction, bring it to me. Your religion, bring it to me. Your frustrations, bring it to me. And before you bring it to me, I'm going to make a way for you to know that I love you. The Bible says while we were yet sinners, while we weren't even thinking about God, he said Christ died. Well, that's not really what it says. Um, Paul is writing to people who were alive when Jesus died, and he said, we were still sinners when he died. Um, but they did all believe in God. They, they thought about God. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, that's that's a, a bad... Uh, but, I mean, all right. The, the principle's fine. I mean, you know, that's true. Because for us, it was before we even existed. He died for us. Easter is about the payment for the sin that I made. Technically, that's Good Friday. That's the crucifixion. The resurrection is the proof of the payment, but it's definitely about that, right? It's still circling around that. So again, uh, you could tweak a few things, but you know, I'm not going to cause a big fuss about that. Jesus died the death. We should have all died because of the life we currently live. 100%. Not just the death, um, but his suffering was a, was, a, was a token of what we should suffer for all of eternity. Um, in, in, in the afterlife, right? In hell. Um, and his, he didn't have to suffer it for all of eternity because of the value of Christ, that his suffering is more valuable than our suffering because of his person is infinitely more valuable than we are. Um, however, um, he, he certainly, yeah, that suffering is a picture of how we should have existed for all of eternity afterwards. But this is good. This is good stuff. This is, this is the gospel so far. You didn't even hear what I just said. Everything that I do, the Bible says that he took it up on his body. Every wound, every rip, every tear was not for what he did. The Bible said he lived a perfect life, but he was the sacrificial lamb. Because God says, you know what? For them to be in right relationship with me, somebody's going to have to pay for this. And our big brother Jesus said, I'll pay for it. See, now that's not ransom theory. That is God saying someone has to pay this. I cannot be a just judge and just say no one pays for this for the sin. So Jesus said, I'll pay for it. Like that's that's not ransom theory. Uh, it is ran right. He, he pays our ransom, but it's not like he pays the ransom to the devil. So that's actually not what was portrayed in the play. So now he's, he's kind of fixing <laughs> the bad theology of the play. Hey, that's good. I, I'm, I'm for that. I'll go and take the punishment that they should have. Right. Isaiah 53. And our elder brother, the second Adam. See, the first Adam messed it up. But the second Adam came to correct it all. And when he got up on that tree, it wasn't Jesus up there by himself. It was me. Yeah, so all of this is good. Like, this is good um, preaching the gospel. I'm... Uh, you know, and he's even correcting some of the errors in, in the play, like doctoral errors. Yes, we there's a ransom paid. No, it's not paid to Satan, that kind of thing. Um, uh, you know, but here is, here's the here's the segment that of, of this part that's just a little problem, problematic. Check this out. The way for you to be in right relationship with him, I don't care who you are. You are worth and worthy of receiving the gift that Jesus has given to all of us. Now, this is this is not true. Uh, we we are not worth and worthy in and of ourselves, right? We are we are sinful wretches, right? Um, we are not worth the gift of God. We're not worthy. Uh 1 Corinthians uh, 2 Corinthians actually chapter 3 I think. Uh, maybe 4. It's 4. I remember it now. It's 4. Uh, that we have this treasure in earthen vessels it says. Uh, the idea is that Christ is in us, and that's a wonderful thing. Christ chose us, and he makes us what we are. But we are just earthen vessels, right? Like, he chooses us because we're not worthy, 
and displays his amazing love and power in that in that way. So, um, so I, I would disagree with the worthy part, um, but everything else is great uh, in in that gospel presentation. And uh, while I would feel super uncomfortable sitting through that play, um, I, I I'm not gonna. Be, if you guys were here to you know see a little bit of uh, church bashing, I'm just unfortunately not gonna give that to you <laughs> because. While there were, was some doctoral problems with the play, and, and I certainly would feel uncomfortable sitting through that, I wouldn't feel very worshipful. Um, I, I, I'm not going to be able to take the stand of like bashing uh, this because he did bring it around to a, a genuine gospel presentation. Um, so I'm, I got a mixed feelings about it. I, I do. I, there's definitely some doctrinal issues in the play, but overall, I think that. At least the pastor preached the gospel at the end, and it, it seemed to be the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, he didn't talk about repentance, which is an important part of the gospel, and I think that probably would be my biggest issue, really, is that in order to be saved, we, not to, we need to not just believe in Jesus, but we choose Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We're going to live um, for him. And that's a, a important part of, the, of of salvation that I think was left out, or at least in the clip that I that we saw. So that's that. Hope you guys had a great Easter at your church, uh, and we'll leave it there. We'll see you right here next time on Point of View.